of strange strange just after my last <laughs> last title that I did was uh, Jerusalem by Alan Moore this uh, new book comes out time travel and uh, they're both really about time and they both do it in different ways whereas the Alan Moore book was really long and I had some issues with it if you look at that review this one I was a little more readable it's a lot shorter 300 pages and uh, yeah this is a, a better book I would say James Gleek is really known as a science writer and I've gone through all his books and I recommend them for the most part his first one chaos is really a bit technical but otherwise he becomes almost increasingly popular with every book like it's just a little more accessible so this one time travel I had thought it might be about like scientific efforts to actually do time travel and that's not really what it's about it's more about how cultures and individuals throughout history have looked at time what is time and what are we what is this thing that we're in is it something that we can change and so on and so on all the issues with time and kind of the centerpiece of what he's analyzing is uh, I mean he does talk about things like Einstein and science but really it's more about fiction particularly H.G. Wells the time machine which 1895 came out and was really a uh, just kind of open the floodgates for all these other types of narratives involving time and he argues that even like with Shakespeare the way that Shakespeare considered time wasn't the way that we in the modern world think of time because until like say the 19 or actually the 1800s maybe technology and development were so slow that people didn't think that the future was going to be particularly different from the present it's like how things were in the past just every now and then a new invention comes along but for the most part things were pretty level and you could expect things to remain the same now obviously that is not the case at all and when uh, wells came along and did his the idea of jumping far into the future and things being extremely different is i think something we can all relate to now and it's like even five-year-olds can watch adventure time and understand time travel or back to the future and it's not something it's it's kind of our mythologies have ingested it and embraced it and I don't think there's any way to escape it now so I guess I was a little disappointed that there wasn't more science in this book like there's really only like maybe like one 200 pages in and before he actually starts talking about uh, Kurt Goodell, Gerdell and uh, Albert Einstein and how they viewed time and this even has a quote similar to Jerusalem the same quote from Einstein about how um, I forget like the past the present and the future are not uh, separate the way p most people experience them that's just an illusion that's that's kind of a common trope in science fiction stories and things like that is that this idea of the rigid universe that that's how he describes uh, the world of H.G. Wells the time machine is that things are set in stone and they're done but they're unlike the uh, Jerusalem book this actually does look at a lot of different other ways of viewing time and it's a little more, I guess, agnostic about the our ability to change time and what it is. The ultimate conclusion that he has, though, is that time travel is impossible and will never be possible. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't think anyone can really say. I mean, so many things that we've said were impossible are now possible, so who knows? In examining all these different ways that time is presented through fiction, mainly, what I didn't kind of like was that if you if I mean a lot of the books I had read and was familiar with stories by Robert Heinlein Isaac Asimov and so on but if there was a story I didn't know you kind of get the impression it's just like a bunch of spoilers and if you didn't know any of these stories I think it might ruin a lot of them so keep that in mind but as an overview it was kind of interesting I don't know if I would really say it's great great but it's I did have some new aha moments when thinking about time that I wouldn't have had if I I don't read the book. I think Borges, or Jorge Luis Borges, is probably the most interesting, maybe maybe the one that I kind of most admire in the book. He's He has like the most ambiguous and kind of disorienting view of time that in his short stories that I, I really need to go through and read them all because I've read a few but not enough and uh, I've always admired his work a lot. But there's a good section in the book about time capsules which I always thought were much older but apparently it was a pretty much a 20th century phenomenon and yeah he, he goes into more I appreciated that chapter the most because it's like the most non-fiction chapter and 
I wanted more of that throughout the book. I, I kind of wish the entire book had just been nonfiction, you know, brief allusions to major things like the time, the time machine that really changed the way that people looked at time. The, the idea of that being able to jump ahead to a specified date within your control. I think that really did change our perspective, but I wanted more about the nonfiction attempts and ideas about time that people had. So it is well written. And if you, if it does sound like your cup of tea, I, I, I can recommend it for what it is. It's, it's like a survey of fiction and it, it makes me want to go and read the stories that I'm not familiar with. Like for example, there was one story by Ian e. Forster called, I believe the machine stops that sounded particularly interesting. Uh, I'm, I am going to go read that story and yeah, so it, it will probably expose you to at least some stories you're not familiar with and some new ideas about time. I didn't realize, for example, that going back in time to kill Hitler was such a cliche. I mean, I'd, I kind of heard stories about that, but I, I didn't realize it was so common and he, he did a lot of the homework and researched all these stories. So it's that larger data about trends in pop pulp magazines and science fiction uh, paperbacks, how that evolved is kind of interesting. It's just like, uh, I wanted a little more.